Welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. I'm here at Rain City Shooting Center to shoot the Big Deagle in 50 Action Express. And I have 300 grain XTP hollow points with a list of velocity of 1,475 feet per second. This is going to be fun. That's a fair sized bullet. And you know it's a true Desert Eagle. Because it didn't work. Oh yeah. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's a seven. So you could totally use that for self-defense. I'd like to thank the sponsors of this video, Rain City Shooting Center, home of Rain City Tactical, makers of fine Kydex holsters that I purchase with my own money and use myself, and Rain City Firearms. Great bunch of folks, good stuff. So thanks for the sponsorship, guys. So, the Desert Eagle was introduced in the 1980s from Israeli military industries in 357 Magnum. And it's an interesting gun, as you'll see when we get to the tabletop. It's also a big gun. The current iteration, which this is, um, I'm pretty sure weighs four and a half pounds and uh, has a lot of interesting features. Now, 500 AME, for those of you not familiar with it, Kind of makes 44 Magnum look anemic. They're huge. And this is one of the lighter bullet loadings. It's a mere 300 grain XTP, which exits this gun at a pretty spicy 1,475 feet per second. That's not nothing. <laughs> anyway, I first encountered one of these in the 1980s in 357 Magnum. And they have a number of features that I find highly questionable and suboptimal. And they're very big, they're very heavy, and they only worked kind of moderately well. But it was neat, it was a 3P7 Magnum and an autoloader, and that was not so much a thing then. Yeah, there was the Kunin if they were in business this week and making guns and you could get one, and they cost almost as much as the Desert Eagle. You got it. I think they're a much better gun though. Anyway, enough trashing the Eagle. Let's go to the tabletop and trash it some more. The Desert Eagle is freaking huge. And as I said, I am not joking when I said I believe this one weighs at least four and a half pounds. What you get is a single action semi-auto with a 500 AE with a seven round magazine. They are available in 3D7 and 44 Magnum also. Actually, I'm not sure they make the 3D7 anymore. It is a single action auto. 
It is a direct impingement gas operated system with a rotating bolt. And um, it has some interesting features like this safety that is very, very stiff and almost impossible to actuate or deactivate with your shooting hand. It's hard. I have big, strong hands and it's hard. So the barrel is basically fixed, which is nice because it means your sights are fixed, the front side at least. And it leaves some non-reciprocating mass up front, which helps tame recoil. A lot of the current ones are ported. This one is not. Uh, the trigger pull is pretty nice. It's about four pounds. Um, not too much over travel or take up. And the reset is on the long side. But trust me, you're not going to be shooting this gun fast enough that the long reset becomes an issue. And uh, it is an extremely cool gun. As you can see, it's got Picatinny rail on the top, a uh, little cutout at the back, and it's got the fixed rear sight, fixed front sight, and uh, Picatinny rail underneath. Although, quite frankly, if you hung a bunch of stuff on those Picatinny rails, most people would not be able to aim the gun Oh, and it has a magwell funnel that is really not terribly effective looking. Magazine holds seven rounds. It is freaking huge. But on the other hand, you know, if, if you want a sidearm for hunting Cape Buffalo in case of emergencies, get something else. Because as you saw in the shooting video, this malfunctioned a number of times, which I took as a certificate of authenticity because every so often you hear about someone who has one that works well and is reliable. I'm not sure I believe them. <laughs> I haven't seen it myself, so I'll have to suspend judgment. What it is, however, is undeniably cool. I mean, it is just a massive chunk of steel and I'm glad it's a massive chunk of steel because the recoil would be genuinely annoying if the gun were significantly lighter. This one has rubber grips and appears to be all stainless steel finish. They're available in a variety of finishes, Cerakote, all kinds of stuff. Now these are now provided by Magnum Research rather than Israeli Weapons Industries, formerly Israeli Military Industries. And uh, you can look up the price yourself. It is gulp inducing, although less so than it was a few years ago. We're getting used to guns costing well over a thousand bucks these days. So it's not as bad as it once was. So what is it like to shoot the Deagle 50? 300 grain bullet at 1475 feet per second. It's got some pepper. Um, but the weight of the gun really tames that as does the direct impingement gas operation system. The muzzle blast is startling, and a lot of people will conflate that with the recoil and make it think it's worse than it is. The recoil is really not bad. Um, again, four and a half pounds of gun and a lot of non-reciprocating mass to help soak it up. Um, rate of fire is impeded more by unreliability than recoil. We'll put it that way. And, uh, you know, these have terrible ergonomics. They are generally speaking not reliable. They're extremely expensive. And I absolutely love them because they're just so over the top butch. How can you not love it? Anyway, very, very cool gun, despite its flaws and deficiencies. And it's a movie star, because every over-the-top bad guy in an action movie has to flash one of these at some point or another. Anyway, like I said, despite its flaws, it's a genuinely cool gun, and I feel really glad that I had a chance to shoot it. And uh, that's not going to happen often, because 
a box of uh, 20 shells is over 50 bucks. Thus the sponsorship <laughs> paid for the ammo. Anyway, just cool, weird, kind of a goof. And an icon from all its movie appearances. It is what it is. Cooler than it is good. Anyway, shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, this all costs money. Your contributions help more than you know. And shout out to channel benefactors like Rain City Shooting Center and a host of individuals and small businesses that have made my life ever so much easier with contributions of ammo, allowing me to show you their guns and all the other nice things people do for the channel. So, thank you all. Hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.